Okay, everyone. Salam alaikum and welcome to. Live, 17th November 2017. Let's start today's session. <clears throat> we have already covered uh, from day one to day four yesterday, and today is day five where we are going to discuss the ratios and we'll be solving two different questions by the name of Funject and Landing. And tomorrow is going to be the mock debrief. So you are going, uh, you uh, you people are going to receive the mock exams today, probably after the session. And then you can try that mock at your home, and then we'll be solving them uh, in tomorrow's session. And tomorrow's timing is going to be 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Tomorrow we have a two-hour session, and this is a uh, this is according to the Pakistan standard time. So you have to adjust the time accordingly as per your time. So tomorrow's session is from 10 to 12 Pakistan Standard Time and today we are going to discuss the ratios. <clears throat> okay, now let's start. We are going to solve the past papers questions directly. The first question is by the name of uh, Funjek. This is June 2017 question, the most recent one uh, that have been published by ACCA. And then we are going to solve the December 2016, the, uh, the second most recent one as published by ACCA. So December and September attempts are uh, published combined, but uh, uh, but for this December and September, they were published uh, separately. So the question that we are going to solve relates to December and June 2017 and March 2017 were published in a combined form. So let's see a question. This is by the name of Funject. Are you people aware of basic ratios? Are you people aware of some basic ratios? Okay, Hamza. Yes, Simran, the class have just begun. Basically, you should be aware of some basic ratios such as GP margin. The formula for gross profit margin is gross profit divided by sales into 100. The, the formula for the net profit margin is net profit divided by sales into 100. The formula for operating profit margin is operating profit divided by sales into 100. And by operating profit, we mean profit before interest and in tax, PBIT. By operating profit margin, we mean profit before interest and in tax and divided by sales. Apart from this, you should be aware of some other basic ratios. Okay. Just give me a second. There's some problem with the pen. Let me use the simple keyboard for this. Okay, so the pen is working fine now. So a gross profit margin is gross profit divided by sales into 100. Net profit margin is net profit divided by sales into 100. Operating profit margin is profit before interest and tax divided by 100. And then you should be aware of other basic ratios, which includes the retain, uh, return on equity, which is profit after tax divided by equity into 100.
and similarly for example if we talk about return on capital employed it is going to be profit before interest in tax divided by capital employed and by capital employed what do we mean the word capital employed means equity plus debt and what do we mean by debt debt is actually a uh, long term interest bearing debt is actually long term and interest bearing such as for example if, uh, if i talk about non current liabilities all non current liabilities are not a debt so for example if we have loan notes they are a debt because they have interest they are long term but if we talk about deferred tax liability it is long term but not interest bearing so that is why when we are calculating the debt we do not use deferred tax liability as a debt because it is long term but it is, but it is not uh, interest bearing so that's why we don't call it a debt walikum <clears throat> assalam neeraj mohammad nabil the ratio nabil is asking so the ratios of f7 and f5 are same or they are uh, different according to the subjects yes mohammad nabil they are different according to the subjects so don't expect similar ratios the ratios in f7 are going to be based on the accounting standards and not on the other factors so you should be aware of gp margin you should be aware of np margin you should be aware of operating profit margin you should be aware of roe roce and then you should be aware of the net asset turnover now what is net asset turnover sales divided by the capital employed net asset turnover is sales divided by the capital employed now, now there is one more important thing that you have to remember for example if we have two companies if we have two companies i'm giving you an example now for example the gross profit margin of uh, of the first company is 20% and the gross profit margin Uh, and the net profit margin of the company is let's suppose uh, 10% and the operating expenses are actually 15% so one thing that you have to understand is that the difference between the gp margin and the op margin is actually the difference between the gp margin and the op margin is actually operating expenses so the difference between these is operating expenses so i can say that operating expenses are actually 5% of sales because gp margin is 20% of sales and operating profit is 15% uh, uh, of sales so the expenses the operating expenses are 5% of the sales so this is also very important in identifying that how well the company is managing its operating expenses so uh, whenever we are comparing two different companies we we also need to compare the operating expenses as compared to the sales to identify how well is the company managing its operating expenses okay simran i haven't written nci anywhere simran i haven't written nci anywhere so you have to check okay so now these are some basic ratios which relates to profitability ratios these are actually profitability ratios so whenever the question is going to ask you to assess the performance these are used to assess the financial performance of the company so whenever the question is going to ask you to assess the financial performance of the company you are going to calculate the profitability ratios in that case okay so you should be aware of these basic ratios and apart from this there are some liquidity ratios now what are liquidity ratios liquidity ratios includes current ratio liquidity ratio includes quick ratio which is also known as asset test ratio receivable turnover 
in days inventory turnover in days these are some basic ratio that you should be aware of and payable turnover in days so these are actually liquidity and working capital ratios so how do we calculate the current ratio this is current asset divided by current liabilities quick ratio is current assets minus inventory divided by current liabilities receivable days is closing receivables divided by credit sales into 100 inventory turnover is inventory divided by cost of sales into 100 payable turnover is payables divided by purchases into 100 so these are some further ratios that you should be aware of some basic calculations I hope you people know all all the details about that Similar by NCL I mean non current liabilities non current liabilities Walaikum Asalaam Talal Hassan okay so now th this is how you are going to calculate the liquidity and the working capital ratios and finally you should be aware of gearing ratios And in gearing ratios, there are total two type of ratios. Gearing, which is debt divided by equity. And second is interest cover, which is profit before interest and in tax divided by the amount of interest. So these are some basic formulas that you should people learn by your heart because in the exam, a ratios question includes actually two elements calculation of the ratios and the analysis of the ratios calculation of the ratios and the analysis of the ratios both of these are important so approximately more marks relates to the more mark relates to the uh, analysis rather than calculation but the calculation are some sort of easy marks that you people can score Simran below NCL I have actually provided the details that what what do we mean by debt Nabil is asking, sir, don't we multiply with days instead of 100? Have I, have I multiplied by 100? Okay, I'm sorry for that. This is 365, not 100. This is 365 and not 100. Thank you, Nabil. is saying where credit sales and purchase are not stated, then can the sales and the purchase be used in their place? Yes, Simeon, if the credit sales or purchase are not mentioned, you can use the... You can use the... Uh, the total payables and the receivables and further you also need to uh, uh, remember one thing that we can even use cost of sales if purchases are not given in the question so if the purchases are not given in the question you can even use cost of sales instead of that uh, yes she I have corrected it thank you um, Nazia Zubair wants to see the previous slide. Nazia, this is the main slide right now. I've written majority of the elements over here. Apart from that, this was the slide. So at the end, I'm going to show you um, a zoomed out slide so that you, you uh, so that you people can take the snapshot. <coughs> okay. Okay. So now these are the few elements that you should uh, uh, that you people should remember. Now let's start reading the question by the name of Funject. The question says that uh, I'm going to start from the requirement so that we should be aware of what exact area do we need to see. So this is the requirement. Where the question says that redraft aspect company's statement of profit or loss for 20x4 to adjust for the disposal of non-core division in note number one so we actually have to redraft aspects companies profit or loss for 20x4 where we are going to adjust the disposal of non-core division in note number one so there is something which is included in the income statement uh, 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 that relates to the disposal of the non-core division and we are going to remove that 
and the management and rent charges which would be imposed per note 2 and 3 if a spec company was acquired by a funjet company. So there are some management and rent charges also that if we acquire them we are, we are going to pay some, we are going to pay or receive some management or rent charges. So we are going to redraft the profit or loss for the first five marks. And then the question says that calculate the 20x4 ratios for a spec company equivalent to those shown in note number 4 based on the restated financial information calculated in part A. So we are going to calculate ratios based on the information that we've calculated in part A. You should assume that any increase or decrease in the profit as, uh, as a result of your adjustments in part A will also increase or decrease cash. So if the profit has been changed due to the adjustment, so that would also affect the cash. So we are going to write an entry based on this. Using the ratios calculated in part B, the ratio that we have calculated in part B, comment on aspect company's 20x4 performance and financial position compared to the industry average KPIs provided in note number 4. So part A will be used in part B and part B will be used in part C. So we cannot change the sequence of the requirement. So we have to solve the first part A and then for part B and then part C. So we do not have an option to change the sequence. <clears throat> Arihan, uh, the question will uh, obviously mention that. Okay, now I'm starting to read the question where the question says that Funjet company has identified Aspect company as a possible acquisition. We are thinking of acquiring the Aspect company within the same industry and this, the, uh, the company is in the same industry. Aspect company is currently owned by Gamilton Group. The following extracts from the financial statements of Aspect company. So Aspect company is a part of Gamilton Group. This is a part of Gamilton Group. So we can say that Gamilton Group is the parent and SPEC company is the subsidiary. And now Funjet company is planning to acquire the SPEC company in its own group. So we are going to analyze the performance of SPEC company as, an, uh, as, a, uh, as a possible acquisition. So the question is given as the revenue of an, uh, of a spec company, the cost of sales, the gross profit, the operating expenses, the operating profit of 21,000. And then we have the balance sheet of the company, non-current assets, inventory, receivables, cash, equity, retail earnings, 8,000, which is good. Loan of 16,700, trade payables and current tax payable. So now let's start reading the information in note number one. Where the question says that on 1st April 20x4, which is, let's see the date, our year end was December 20x4. So three months, three months uh, after the start of the year, January, February, March, after three months on 1st April. So I'm writing down three months over here. After three months, Aspect company decided to focus on its core business and so disposed of a non-core division. The disposal generated a loss of 1.5 million dollars. So this is a one-time loss. This is a loss which we, which would have been recorded in the PNL, but this is a one-time loss. Will not be incurred every time. Which is included within the operating expenses. This is included within the operating expenses. The following extracts shows the results of the non-core division for the period prior to the disposal which were included in aspect company's results for 20x4. So these values are included in the above statement of PNL. So what we are going to do, we are going to remove this as per the requirement. So we have to uh, re uh, remove the revenue of 2100, cost of sales of 1200, GP of 900, operating expense of 700, re removing the operating profit of 200. So let me write down the answer on the new page. So I'm writing revenue. Cost of sales. Gross profit. And then we have operating expenses. 
and then operating profit. So this is the income statement that we are going to restate, adjust. So the revenue was 54,200. 54,200. The cost of sales were 21,500. So we are going to remove the values of the subsidiary. The gross profit was 32,400. This will automatically be adjusted. The operating expenses were 11,700. So these are the values of the aspect company, including the disposal. Now we are going to deduct 2100, 1200, minus 2100, minus 1200, and then we are going to adjust this 700 operating expenses. So minus 700 for the operating expenses and minus. 1500 for the one time loss the one time loss of 1500 this is also included in the this is also included in the expenses operating expenses so we are removing this because it's one time so this way we are going to get the final amounts of the revenue and the cost of sales but right now we haven't completed the all of the adjustments so we also need to see adjustment number 2 and 3 meanwhile if this uh, if there is any confusion in adjustment 1 you people can ask Okay, uh, Yumna is saying it's 1st April 20x4, 3 months, how sir? Okay, Yumna and Smita. Yes, Yumna, 9 months before the year end and 3 months after the start of the year. So 3 months from the start and 9 months from the end. 3 months from the start and 9 months from the end. Smita, are you getting? 3 months from the start and 9 months from uh, before the year end. Simran is saying, why do we minus? Because Simran, these are the expenses that have been included. The, these results of the uh, of the division that we have sold are included in the above income statement. So these would not be there in the next time. So being in being the Funjet company who's going to acquire a spec company, am I going to get these results being shown above? No, because this also includes the the values that relates to the business that we have disposed of these values and these are not relevant to us so we are actually removing these that after my acquisition the the uh, 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 the revenue of 2100 is not going to be there the revenue the cost of sales of 1200 is not going to be there the operating expense of 700 is not going to be there after my acquisition so what i am doing actually i am removing the values that will not be there after my acquisition so that I can assess what value can I get from the spec company. Okay. <clears throat> Simin is saying how would the one time loss have been treated initially? Simran, the one time loss would have been recorded in PNL when I have disposed of a division, assets credit, bank debit, balancing figures the gain or loss which would have been recorded in operating expenses. Hamza is saying if in the question we had given amount of the whole year, does we have to apportion it? No Hamza, because the question has already given us the revenue of six months, the cost of sales of six months, uh, uh, of three months, sorry. So when all of the values already relate to three months, we do not need to time apportion them. If the question would have given the values of the entire year, then we would have uh, time apportioned them. So, Simran, this 2100 is actually three months figure, not a full year. Akbar Naveed is saying, will we take the corresponding impact of 1.5 million one-time loss by reducing cash? Yes, Akbar, we are going to reduce the cash as well, but later on. Because Smita, we are, we are actually removing, we are actually removing these values. That's why we are taking three months time. So for example, if I say moving towards the answer sheet, if I see the revenue for the entire year was 54,200, which includes 2100 of first three months of the division that has been sold. 
So currently the revenue was 5400, but after my acquisition, but after my acquisition, am I going to get the revenue of 2100? Am I going to get the revenue of 2100? The answer is no, because that division has already been sold. So I'm not getting, uh, so I'm not going to get anything from the division that has been sold. That's why we are removing this. Similar because we are acquiring aspect, but aspect has disposed of a division. There are two different things. Fungite company, I'm the fungite company, I'm acquiring the aspect company, and aspect company has disposed of a division in this year. So when aspect company has disposed of the division, this means the values of the disposed division will not be there after my acquisition. So I want to see the values that I'm going to get from the aspect company, not the ones that the previous shareholders would have get would have got. Is it clear, Simon? I want to see what I can get, not what they have got. Okay, so now let's move back onto the question. So we have incorporated the adjustment one by removing the values of the division that has been sold and removing the loss generated on the sale of the division. Now let's see bullet number two where the question says that at present, aspect company pays a management charge of 1% of the revenue to the Gamilton group. Aspect company pays management charges of 1% of revenue to Gamilton group. This means that this would have been included in the operating expenses. So we are going to remove this charges because after my acquisition, after my acquisition, Aspect will not be required to pay any charges to Gamilton group. They are paying 1% of the revenue as management charges, but once I acquire a spec company, a spec will not be required to pay any further management charges to Gamilton Group, so we are going to remove that, which is included in the operating expenses. So I'm going to remove this 1% of the revenue from the operating expenses. So if I come to the operating expenses, I'm going to remove the management charges, which is 1% of revenue so let me calculate over here management charges to Gamilton group is equals to now what are the management charges one person of the revenue so the revenue was actually 54 200 so one person of this is going to be 54 200 into one person which is going to be 542. So these are the management charges that I'm going to remove from over here. So I'm removing 542 and I've calculated this in working number one so that if anyone want to check from where are we getting this, this is working number one. Is it clear that how we have calculated the management charges? Yes, Hamzali and Nabil, thank you. Okay, that's good. So we have excluded the management charges that, that aspect company is currently paying to the Gamilton Group, so we have removed that. Back to the question. But the question further says that Fungite company, Fungite company imposes a management charge of 10% of the gross profit on all of its subsidiaries. Now previously Gamilton group was actually charging management fees. We have removed that. Instead of that, now this time we are going to charge management fees, which is 10% of the gross profit. We are going to charge 10% of the gross profit. So let's go back and see what is the amount of the gross profit. This is going to be 54,200. 54,200 minus 2,100, which is going to be 52,100. So this is the revenue, and the cost of sales is going to be 21,500 minus 
1200 which is going to be 20,300 so the gross profit is going to be 50 to 100 minus 20,300 which is going to be 31,800 so this is the amount of the gross profit that will be there after the acquisition by the by the Funjet company so this is the gross profit 31,800 yes thank you Hamzali so now I'm writing management charges and giving this a name of working number two management charges to Funjet company is going to be 31,800 into 10% which is going to be 3,180 so instead of 542 we are actually adding 3,180 the reference of working number two Okay, is this clear up to now? Is there any confusion up to now that we have removed the impact of the division that has been sold because that will not be there once I acquire a spec company. So that is something not relevant to me. And I have removed the, the charges that currently a spec company is paying to the Gamilton group. And instead I've included the value that I'm going to charge from them. Shiza Salim is saying GP is 12138. How come Shiza? Shiza? How have you calculated the gross profit? Okay, you are telling the operating expenses. Okay, let's see. Let, let's complete the question first and then calculate the total. Because there's something more in adjustment number three. So in adjustment number three, the question says that aspect company's administration office are currently located within a building owned by the Gamilton Group. So the office offices of aspect company is in a building which is owned by the Gamilton Group. If aspect company were acquired, the company would need to seek alternate premises. Once we acquire the aspect company, obviously we need to see another premises. Aspect company paid rent of 46,020x4. Aspect has paid rent of 24. And the commercial rent for equivalent office space would cost $120,000. So currently, Aspect company is paying a lower rentals as compared to the market. So we are going to adjust the rent as well. So I'm actually deducting 46 from this and adding 120 instead. Because now we are not going to pay the rent of 46 instead we need to pay the market rentals of 120 so this is why we have adjusted the rent for gain because the rent was previously the rent was previously uh, below the market rentals and now we have to pay the market rentals similarly saying that why aspect company cannot be in Gamilton company's premises that is what the uh, uh, similar, that is what the question is saying how can I tell you why the question has said us that we will have to take another premises. So, okay, we will have to take it. Now, we have discussed all three adjustments. Let's, let's discuss the fourth adjustment. But the question is saying the following is a list of comparable industry average key performance indicators, KPIs, for 20x4. So, the industry is earning a gross profit margin of 45, operating profit margin of 28, receivables days are 41, current ratio is 1.6. Asset test ratio is 1.4 and the gearing of the industry is 240 percent which is too high. So uh, we have actually completed part A that we have redrafted the profit or loss uh, adjusting for the disposal of the non-core division. We have removed the disposal of the non-core division which is mentioned in note 1 and then we have charged the management and the rent charges uh, according to note 1 and 2. So part A requirement is complete. Let's calculate the total first. So the total is going to be 
11,700 minus 700 minus 1500 minus 542 plus 3180 minus 46 and plus 120. So this is going to be 1, 2, 2, 1, 2. So this means the operating expense is going to be 31,800 minus 12212, which is 19588. So this is the final operating profit that is relevant to us for the aspect company. These are the operating expenses which are relevant to us being the Funjet company. Uh, okay, Hamza Ali is asking, sir, can we also add the differential amount? Yes, Hamza, you can add the differential amount. No harm in that. Smita is saying, sir, please explain again about the rent of 46 and 120. Smita, let's suppose you have a company. You are the owner of a company. And you are charging a rental of 46 from, the, from that company to give some office space. Now, when I, when I acquire the company, are you still going to charge 46 from, from, from the company? aspect company no obviously now you're going to charge the market rentals and the market rentals are 120 so for example I being the owner of the new company I take out aspect company now 46,000 rentals are saved now with the aspect company is not required to pay 46 instead the new rent that I have to pay is 120 so I have deducted 46 the rent saved and the uh, uh, and, and now the rent being paid is 120 so, uh, so what you can do is you can even add the incremental 120 minus 46. This is the incremental rent that we would have to, uh, we would be required to pay. Shiza is saying 19588. Thank you, Nishiza. So now requirement part A is complete. Requirement part A is now complete. This was the entire requirement part number A. Now we are going to write move towards part B where the question says that to calculate 20x4 ratio for aspect company equivalent to those shown in note number 4 based on the restated financial information calculated in part A. So now we need to recalculate these ratios. So for part B I'm going to write my answer and I'm going to calculate the gross profit margin and then I have the operating profit margin and then we have the receivable days which means receivables collection period Current ratio, asset test ratio, and gearing. So we have current ratio, asset test ratio, and then we have the gearing ratio. So these are the ratios that we need to recalculate. Thank you, Hamza, for calculating the GP. Samin is saying that please the concept of removing the 700, 1500, 542 from the operating expense is not clear. Simeon, the, the answer is pretty simple. That 700 relates to the, the business that we have disposed of. So as we are removing the revenue and the cost of that business disposed of, so we are also removing the operating expenses of the business disposed of. And the loss on disposal of that business is 1500, so obviously that, would, that loss would also not be there every time, every year, so we are also removing that. And then 542 is the management charges charged by the Gamilton Group. So once we have acquired them, uh, 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 we have acquired the aspect company, we are not required to pay any management charges to the, uh, uh, to the Gamilton Group. So these all costs are included in the operating expenses but will not be there once we acquire the company. Once we acquire the company, these values will not be there during the next year. Okay, so a lot of people have already answered. The GP margin is 
let me calculate as well so that it is being recorded for the future use as well so now the gross profit is actually 31800 divided by 50 to 100 which is going to be 61 percent 61.036 so we can say 61 percent approximately the operating profit margin is 19588 divided by 50 to 100 into 100 which is going to be 37.6 percent and 37.6 percent and then we have the receivable days okay move before moving further I'm also writing an entry in this case the entry for what do uh, 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 do listen this carefully the operating profit that we have calculated for SPEC is 19588 this time 19588 and the profit shown by the question was actually 21,000 so how much less revenue are we getting we are getting a revenue decrease from 21,000 to to 19588 so this means the profit has been reduced by 1412 so I would say the entry will be retained earnings debit a decrease in profit would, would obviously mean a decrease in profit would obviously mean decreasing the retained earnings by what amount 1412 and this will also decrease the bank balance by 1412 because the question had mentioned us if I go back to the question the question had previously mentioned in the note that you should assume that any increase or decrease in the profit as a result of your adjustments in part A will also increase or decrease the cash so the examiner wants us to, to to check the difference between the profits and then to adjust the cash as well because the, the adjustment of cash will affect the current ratio and the asset test ratio as well okay this one question so can we say we list those items added before and add those items not included in the profit statement yes exactly thank you Hamzali for the value why this saying sir is it necessary to mention the ratio formulas as well in the exam Wahid, it is uh, it is preferable to show the calculation because it is preferable to show the calculation so that if you have made any error so the examiner would know that how have you calculated the value for example GP is 31,800 and you have shown divided by 50 to 100 into 100 so this much of the pro uh, uh, of the calculation is enough you do not need to write the formula of the ratio you just simply show in the bracket that what exact how you have calculated the value should I saying it sir if this entry is not asked will we still make this no should if the entry has not been asked you are not going to make any entry because the question is going to ask you if if any such thing is required so 19588 divided by 52100 and 200 for the operating profit margin now we are moving towards the receivable days now for that we need the amount of receivables divided by sales of 50 to 100 and into 365 so let me check the value of the receivables from the question the value of the receivables is actually 5700 the value of receivable is 5700 so I'm writing 5700 over here so this way I'm going to get the receivable days 5700 divided by 50 to 100 into 365 which is going to be 39.93 days so I would say 40 days because days are normally not written in, uh, in the decimals we're not going to write the number of days in decimals 39.93 days no 40 days approximately <coughs> Uh, 
Okay, Hamza is Hamza is asking, sir, in CB, what sort of workspace is given for ratios, a spreadsheet or typing sheet, or a mixture of both? Hamza, uh, the typing sheet will be given to you, which is a word processing tool. So I am actually solving the entire answer in the same format. If you see, you also have to solve the answer exactly in the same format in the word processing sheet available in the CB format. So there is no difference in this. So I'm I'm typing on one note. You will be typing on the word. The only difference is this. So you have to prepare the tables just like I have done, and similarly a table for the income statement. The workings being shown beneath the income statement. So the entire process is going to be the same. Yes, Faraz, you you will have to create tables. There will be an option how to create the table. Uh, if 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 you are not sure, I can show you how to create the table. That's not an issue. So don't worry, I will show you. Okay, now current ratio is current assets divided by current liabilities. So the total current assets are twelve thousand nine hundred, and the current liabilities are eleven thousand six hundred. So twelve thousand nine hundred divided by eleven thousand six hundred. But if you see that we have also adjusted the cash as a credit one four one two. So I'm going to write one two nine double zero minus one four one two divided by eleven thousand six hundred. So as the cash has been reduced because of the decrease in the profit, so if I'm earning less, I'm going to receive less cash. So the current ratio in this case is going to be twelve thousand nine hundred minus one four one two divided by eleven thousand six hundred, which is going to be. 0.99 so approximately i can say 1 is to 1 the current ratio is 1 is to 1 and for the asset test ratio i'm going to copy this and paste this the only difference is that i'm going to deduct the amount of the inventory because the quick ratio is the amount excluding the inventory so let's check the amount of the inventory in the balance sheet and it is 4900 So I'm actually going to deduct four thousand nine hundred from this. So the value is going to be twelve thousand nine hundred minus one four one two minus forty nine hundred. These are the current assets, excluding the excluding the inventory, divided by eleven thousand six hundred. So this is approximately zero point five five times. So I would say zero point six is to one. And I actually have to cut this value and paste it over here. So now the last ratio is gearing, which is debt divided by equity. So the amount of debt is sixteen thousand nine hundred, sixteen thousand seven hundred. Sorry, and the amount of equity is nine thousand. So sixteen thousand seven hundred divided by nine thousand. But again, the nine thousand is before the entry. So if the profits have been reduced, so the retail earnings will also get reduced. So nine thousand minus one four one two is going to give me the amount of the equity. So I'm going to say sixteen thousand seven hundred divided by and then bracket nine thousand minus one four one two. So into hundred, I'm going to get the gearing of two hundred and twenty percent because gearing is normally in percentage terms. So this is these are the ratios that we have just calculated for for the aspect company after adjusting for the uh, for the values uh, according to the Gamelton group. Now the, these ratios are those ratios which I am going to get as being the Funject company. So beside these, I am also going to write the values uh, from the question so that the comparison is easier for me. So if I go and check the values, these are forty-five, twenty-eight, forty-one, forty-five, twenty-eight, forty-one days, one point six is to one, and one point four is to one, and then two hundred and forty percent. So now these are the industry averages: forty-five, twenty-eight, forty-one, one point six, one point four to forty, and these are the values of the aspect company that we have just calculated. 
So till over here we have calculated the part B. So out of 20 we have scored 10 marks which are comparatively easier marks as compared to the ratio analysis. So in the exam try to not to not to um, not to lose these easy marks because these are more of calculation and less of thinking process. So the only thing that that I think was difficult in the exam up to now was the adjustment of these two working number one and working number two. Apart from this, all of the items were comparatively easier. Adjusting for the rent is not not too much difficult. Removing the the, the uh, division we have disposed of was not too much difficult. Removing the 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 loss on the disposal, uh, there's a chance that students may miss this. But again, this is not difficult. This is a silly mistake if you are if, if you are forgetting this. So the only technical calculation in the exam was 542 and 3180. Yes, Simran, this is also a hard part of making the entry. But for example, if you if you have not made the entry and calculated the ratios, you are still getting uh, you are still going to get the marks for the ratios because your procedure is right. The only element that you have missed is the entry. Yes, Naman, these are available for download. The admin will guide you on this. Okay, now let's start discussing part C. When the part C was that using the ratios that we have calculated in part B, comment on aspect companies 20x4 performance in the financial position compared to the industry average KPIs provided in note number four. So now we are going to start the analysis from the profitability ratios. So in the exam, you you are you have to write the headings that I'm calculating the profitability ratios or the liquidity ratios or the gearing ratios. So let's start from the gross profit margin. And uh, if we talk an overall uh, image, looking at the gross profit in the operating profit margin, what do you people think? Who is better, the industry or the aspect company? What do you think? Who is better? Either the aspect company is better or the industry averages are better. Simran, the mock will be available uh, after today uh, after today's session. Okay, now the question is, who's better? The industry is better or the aspect company is better? What do you people think? Aspect company, aspect company, aspect company. A lot of people are saying aspect company. Yes, this is right. Aspect company is comparatively better because the operating profit margin is also higher and the gross profit margin is also higher. So, but the question is why? Why is the gross profit margin higher? What do you people think for that? This is exactly right that aspect company is better, but why? So actually what we are going to do, we are going to write the first bullet as who's better. And in the second bullet, we are going to write why we are saying that aspect company is better. So I would say that the gross profit margin of aspect company is 61 person and which is after the adjustments for the disposal and the management charges and the rent charges which is higher than the industry average of 45 percent. So in the first bullet we have mentioned that who is better and now we are going to say why what would be the reason behind being better. So let's have your views. Neeraj is saying that in gross profit aspect and in operating profit industry is best. Okay, Hamzali is saying more margin or they buy cheaper. Yes, exactly Hamzali, there are only two possible reasons. Maybe undervaluation of opening stock. Okay, Ali Khan, actually you have to think of a positive side rather than uh, immediately starting with a negative side of understatement of or, uh, 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 or overstatement. So try to be more linked with the uh, 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 with the reasons that would be there rather than the 
rather than directly going towards the manipulation. So as they, they due to they had they charge high prices. Okay, Hamzari is saying maybe they are charging high. Neeraj is talking about industry expenses, which is exactly right, Neeraj. Okay, so I would say that the reason behind maybe either because of higher prices charged from the customers or maybe due to a lower cost paid to the suppliers. So there are two possible reasons either we are charging more or we are incurring less or maybe the reason is a combination of both maybe the maybe both the reasons actually exist there maybe I'm charging more from the industry and incurring less uh, 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 as compared to the uh, as compared to the industry so that would actually affect the GP margin more yes Yumna maybe they have purchased uh, 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 in a bulk so that they so, so that they are getting a bulk discount no Simran, there are not always the fixed reasons you have to identify from, from the question. So we can even write uh, Yumna's comment that maybe a um, spec company purchases a larger stock resulting in a lower price per unit. So yes Yumna, we can say that. Yes, Simran, you can always use these reasons, but you have to be a bit uh, uh, relevant in the exam as I'm going to uh, uh, prove this point of the larger stock in the later points as well. Smith is asking, so do we have to write the bullet points in the exam or in paragraphs? Smitha, you can write both because there are no professional marks in the uh, fundamental level, but, in pro uh, uh, but when, once you go into the professional level, over there it is not recommended to write in the bullet points. Over there, we recommend to write uh, in the paragraph form. Okay. So now let's continue. That we have we have discussed the reason for the higher cross profit margin. Now, obviously, the operating profit margin is also higher because of the gross profit margin. So I would say that operating profit margin. of a spec company is higher than the industry which is mainly due to the higher gross profit margin so so the one who's having a higher gross profit margin would have a higher operating profit margin obviously but there's one problem what problem if we check the decrease in the in uh, 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 the difference between the 61 and 37 point six, 67 minus 37 point six, we are going to get 23 point four. So the operating expenses of a spec company is 23 point four percent of the revenue. So I can say, but if we calculate, but but the operating expenses of a spec company are 23.4 percent of the revenue as compared to and I'm writing down how have, how have I calculated this 61 percent minus 37.6 percent so that the examiner knows that what exactly how exactly I am solving as compared to now let's calculate for the industry which is going to be 45 minus 28 17 percent so the industry's expenses are 17 percent of the revenue and that of aspect companies 23.4 percent of the revenue so how we have calculated 17 this is 45 percent minus 28 percent so this is comparatively higher and this can be a cause of concern for fungic company that why 
are we incurring so much high so much high operating expenses yes Simran you can write OP margin uh, okay Hamza Ali that's good efficient working expenses Hamza Ali is saying sir, there may be a reason that the company faced losses of disposal which Hamza, uh, uh, Hamza, actually we have already removed the disposal loss so so we cannot say that the reason may be the disposal loss yes Neeraj is right so I'm going to write one more factor over here and do listen this carefully that if we see in the operating expenses the the management fees that that was charged by the Gamilton group was 542 and the value that Funjet is going to charge is 3180 which is too much higher 3180 is too much above 542 almost six times so so this 3180 is actually increasing the operating expenses too much and because of this increase the operating profits have been reduced so for example if I say that the profit is in 19588 and if I remove this 3180 the profits would increase by 3180 and instead I include 542 just to see that if expect uh, 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 if Funjek company is also charging the same as the Gamilton group what would happen in that case just to see that why what is the reason behind this so double two double two six is the operating profit if if the management charges would have been the same I'm repeating in fact I'm also writing over here so that you people can understand more easily that if or I would say the management charges charged by Funjet company is too much higher as compared to the previous charges by the Gamilton group being 3180 or I would say 3.18 million or 0 0.542 million <clears throat> so these are the values being charged by these companies so if Funjet company reduces or would have not charged so much high charges the operating profit margins would have increased significantly so for example now if I'm using 222 to 226 and if I divide this by 50 to 100 to calculate the operating profit this would become 43 percent so right now the rev the percentage was actually 37.6 now this would increase to 43 and if I check the difference between 61 minus 42.6 this would become 18.4 so we would be somewhere near to the industry in that case so actually the only reason of the lower operating profit margin is the higher charges being charged by the Funjet company are you people getting this point are you people getting this point which I've just discussed okay that's good so we have said that the management charges charged by Funjet company being 3.18 million is too much higher as compared to the previous charges by the Gamilton group of 0.52542 if Funjet company would have not charged so much high charges, the operating profit margin would have increased significantly. So the reason behind is actually um, is actually the management charges. So that is the complete analysis of the profitability ratios because we only had two ratios. So writing four points for two ratios is more than enough don't write more than two points per ratio so if there are three 
more than six, don't go for more than six. If there's one, don't go more than two. If there are four, don't don't go more than eight. So uh, even one point per ratio is also enough. One point per ratio is enough, and two points per ratio is the maximum. Don't go beyond that. Don't go beyond that. So four ratios, four points are enough. Five are good. Six are perfect. Seven are okay. Eight is fine, and nine is bad. So uh, if there are four ratios, try to write four or five or six or seven or eight maximum. Don't go beyond that. So one point per ratio. So now let's discuss the liquidity ratio. And in liquidity ratio, the receivable days are more or less the same. So we can start writing from over here. But the current ratio of SPAC company is quite lower as compared to the industry. So I'm writing my first point. At the receivable collection period of SPEC company is almost the same as of the industry average. So there is no concern with this. However, the current ratio of SPEC company is quite lower as compared to the industry. So I'm writing 1 is to 1, which is quite lower as compared to the industry of 1.6 is to 1. Now, what could be the reason behind this lower uh, current ratio? What do people think? What is the reason? Yes, Simran, I, need, uh, I mean the bullet points. <clears throat> okay, Simran is saying because... The profits have been reduced, similar, but the profits have only been reduced by one for one two, not too much. Okay, everybody is saying due to the reduction in cash. Basically, the reduction in cash is not too much. It's only one for one two. So even if you increase it back, how material impact will will it be? So for example, let me say twelve nine hundred. This one, and this time I'm I'm not deducting one for one two divided by eleven six hundred. So we are still at 1.11. So the only effect of the reduction in cash is 0 0.01, not beyond that. So if you are writing the reason is 1412, then I would say that you, you, you are not writing correct answer. Okay, actually sometimes it is not necessary that you know the exact reason. So we can say the reason can either be a lower current assets or a higher current liabilities so it is not necessary that every time you know the reason that this is because of this no so when you don't know the, when you don't know the reason so write the write all of the possibilities so the reason can either be a lower current assets or a, or a higher current liabilities so if I see moving towards the answer sorry moving towards the question I would say that receivables are more or less the same because the receivable days are the same and the cash of 2300 is sufficient enough. We don't need too much of the cash in our balance sheet. So maybe the reason is a higher current liabilities. So what I can do, I can say that the reason can either be a lower current assets and I'm writing other than receivables because the receivable days are more or less the same so that is why the reason behind lower current assets may be receivables yes Hamza Javed Hamza Ahmed maybe uh, uh, the reason can be a higher uh, a higher tax payable so we have written a general answer the reason can be either a lower current assets other than receivables or a higher current liabilities and now I'm going to see the asset test ratio, which is 0 0.6, which is quite lower than the market in the industry. 
and even if you see the difference between the current and the quick ratio it is 0 0.5 as compared to the industry of 0 0.2 so I would say the acid test ratio of aspect company is too low as compared to the industry being 0 0.6 times this means that if the current liabilities are to be settled using the bank and receivables only aspect company would would not be able to to pay its liabilities which should be an area of concern for fungic <clears throat> okay Nita yes you are right yes Hamza you are also right this is the next point that I'm going to write and I'm going to say the difference between the current ratio and quick ratio of aspect company is 0 0.5 is to 1 and that of industry is 0 0.2 is to 1 this shows the ratio of inventory as compared to the current liabilities so I would say that the, that the inventory of Funjet company is um, exactly half of the current liabilities and of the industries it is 0 0.2 of the, uh, uh, of the current liabilities. So this means that we are holding a higher stock. This would mean that aspect company holds a higher stock as compared to the industry and this can also be seen in the profitability ratios or I would say and this can also be seen this can also result in a bulk discount discussed earlier so we have also discussed earlier that maybe the reason behind the behind the higher GP margin maybe the larger stock resulting in lower price per unit so our this point is being uh, being proven over here that we are purchasing a higher stock The purchase of higher stock is resulting in a uh, uh, is resulting in a bulk discount and a lower cost per unit, and resulting in a higher GP margin. Okay, are you all getting these points, or am I solving it on my own? Is this useful that I'm right uh, that I'm writing down the answer along with discussing with you people, or is it useful just to discuss and make you people write on your own? Okay, it's helpful that's good so now let's conclude that uh, the gearing ratio is only left now so I would say that the gearing of aspect company is lower than the industry if we see the the gearing is 220 as compared to 240 of the industry so 
which may be due to the cash received from the disposal of the division and that cash may have been used to repay the loan. So may be possible that we have disposed of the division so the cash that we have got would have been used to repay the loan and that is why the gearing is lower. Further, I would say that this gearing can also be increased which would increase the cash and will make the current ratio and the quick ratio in a better position. as compared to the industry. So there is no big problem just increase the gearing that would automatically increase the current ratio and the quick ratio so you would be at par with the industry. So so, uh, so the areas where respect is, is, is comparatively behind the industry is the current ratio and the quick ratio. So, uh, so the gearing will automatically compensate that and I think that that would be sufficient enough to uh, to, to be easily uh, comparable with the industry. No Elvis Gehring had, uh, uh, does not have any further names. Okay, so now what we are going to do is that we are going to pro provide a conclusion. A conclusion is preferable in the exam. And after this conclusion we will be taking a break and then we will be continuing after the break uh, solving another question which will be uh, the end of today's session. So we are going to solve two questions in today's session. So what should be the conclusion? What what do people say that the overall performance of a spec company is better than the industry averages? However, there are some concerns with the financial position where the liquidity is lower but can be managed with the gearing. So apparently the, the acquisition seems to be favorable but But further analysis should be performed by Funject company before taking a final decision. So apparently we would say that the performance is good, the position is good, uh, 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 the position is bad but can be managed through increasing the gearing. So we know that what is bad and how to and how to cover that. So apparently the, the acquisition seems to be good enough but there should be some further analysis before deciding. Simran wants to copy the answer. Simran I will provide you the word file. I will simply copy all these and paste in the word and then I am going to send you people the, the, the PDF file. So, so you, so you don't need to write down all the answer. You just need to understand that what we are discussing. Hamzari is asking that whether the conclusion is mandatory or we can give mixed views on performance. Yes, Hamza, you you can give a mixed views on the performance. That is no harm because um, obviously we are not professionals to conclude at this at the student level. So that is why if you are confused, don't give any specific conclusion. Just just give a vague con uh, 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 conclusion that. Some things are good and some things are bad, but further analysis should be required. So this is a this is a standard. You can say a conclusion that that can be applied everywhere. Okay, Young is asking that. Can you please re-explain bullet number six? Young in bullet number six, I've said that the gearing can also be increased because our gearing is actually 220 as compared to the industry of 240. So we can increase the gearing by 20 percent. So when we increase the gearing, so we will receive cash. So if we, if, we, if we receive cash, the current assets would increase. And if the current assets would increase, the current ratio would, would also increase to be at par with the industry 
and similarly the asset test ratio would, would, would also increase increase so we will be at par in all of the three ratios or, or in or in all of the four ratios so we would say that the that the position is more or less same as compared to the industry but only if we increase the gearing and the cash that will make the current and the quick ratio uh, in a better position so this is what I, I mean in, in, in the point number six yes Faraz will be providing the Excel file today inshallah so this was the answer if you people want to take a snapshot I am decreasing the screen size so you can take one snapshot of this you people can take one snapshot of this okay Simran just wait a, wait a while yes whether increasing the gearing is a bad point but up to the power of the industry it's good enough so if, if, if the industry is at 240 we can also move up to 240 so gearing increase in gearing is bad as far as we are we are bad as compared to the industry okay so you people can take the snapshot second snapshot this time the profitability liquidity and the conclusion so this is the overall answer I've tried to to use easy words so that you people can easily uh, 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 replicate them in the exam so this was the answer let's take a break and then we are going to solve another question so we are going towards a break and the break starts from 1126 and would end at 11 um, 26 plus 10 is 36 let's make it 38 so we are going to continue at 11 38 and then we are going to discuss further Simran wants to understand the point number five Similar in point number five, I've written that the gearing of the company is quite less as compared to in the industry. So maybe that is because that we have that as we have disposed of a division, so we would obviously would have received some cash. So the cash may may have been used to repay the loan and the gearing would have been reduced. This is the point number five. So let's continue after the break.
Okay, everyone, let's continue now. We are going to solve the next question by the name of landing. And this is the question, this is actually December, uh, this is December 2016 exam question by the name of, uh, by the name of landing. Let's, t uh, let's start reading. The question says that landing company is considering the acquisition of Archway company, a retail company. The summarized financial statements of Archway company for the year ended. 30th September 2006R. So question has given us the uh, the finances of Archway which we are going to purchase uh, similar to the previous one where Funjek was uh, uh, acquiring the um, the aspect company. So the question has given us the income statement with revenue 94,000, cost of sales 73,000, gross profit 21,000, distribution cost 4,000, admin expenses 6,000, finance cost 400, profit before tax 10,600, income tax 2120 and the profit for the year 8480 and then we are provided with the balance sheet where the non-current assets property plant equipment are at 29400 inventory 10500 bank 100 if we see there are no receivables in this case equity 10000 return earnings 8800 and the loan notes are 10800 and if we see these are these are being given in the current liability section so because uh, the uh, the loan notes are redeemable on 1st November 20x6. So November 20x6 and our year end is September 20x6. So only one month after the year end, the month of October and on 1st November we have to pay. So that's why this is being classified in, in current liabilities. Trade payables are 9200 and current tax payable is 2000. So this is the balance sheet. Now let's start from the requirement and then see what exactly do are we required to do and then we will be discussing this. The question says that after making any adjustments to the financial statements, after making any adjustments, first we have to adjust the financial statements of Archway Company which you think may be appropriate for comparative for comparability purposes. Restate the revenue, cost of sales, finance, cost and equity. And equity, assume that your adjustments to profit or loss resulted in retain earnings of 2.3 million. So we are going to assume that retain earnings is 2.3 million, 2300,000 at 30th September 20x6 and we have to calculate the non-current liabilities for 5 marks. So 5 values for 5 marks which, is, which are comparatively easy marks. And then the question says to recalculate the comparable sector average ratios for Archway company based on your restated figures in A. So B is going to depend in, on A and these 6 marks are also easy. So 11 marks easy. And then 9 marks are only uh, uh, relating to the ratio. So, so even if you are able to, to score 4 or 5 marks in these analysis, you have probably scored 16 to 17 marks or 15 to 16 marks. So that is approximately 75% of the question. So, so, so in ratios question, do score easy marks, do not lose them. Now the question says that comment on the performance and gearing of Archway company compared to the retail sector average as a basis for advising landing company regarding the possible acquisition of Archway. So we have to calculate the performance and the gearing so to advise whether this, this business should be acquired or not. So let's start reading the adjustments and then adjusting the revenue. I will be using the answer sheet. And first I'm actually removing these sheets, useless sheets. Okay, so landing answer, I'm going to write it over here. And I'm going to start with part A. We are, we are going to calculate the revenue, the adjusted revenue. The cost of sales and other values. So let me write down the income statement first. Revenue, cost of sales, gross profit, distribution cost. Or let me write it over here. Revenue, gross pro cost of sales, gross profit, and then we have administrative expenses, 
distribution cost, finance cost, <clears throat> profit before tax, income tax and profit for the year. So now this is profit before tax, tax expense and then profit after tax. So the revenue is actually 94,000 and then cost of sales is going to be 73,000 and then we have distribution cost first. So the distribution cost is 4,000, admin expenses are 6,000 finance cost is 400 and tax expense is 20 percent so this is the income statement that we have just copy pasted so that we can adjust this yes Simran we actually have to restate only five things but but obviously we are going to use the entire income statement for for the purpose of analysis so I'm writing all and then we will be giving the answer of those specifically required so apart from this the question has acquired the equity and the non-current liability so we can what we can do is calculate separately the values required in the question so we are going to tell the revenue restated we are going to tell the the cost of sales finance cost the equity and the non-current liabilities so this is actually the the requirement of part A but this first part we are solving so that we are going to use this in the overall analysis okay <clears throat> so now let's start reading the adjustments the question says that from inquiries made landing company has obtained the following information Archway company pays Archway company pays an annual license fee of one million dollars to Cardinal company which is included in the cost of sales for the right to package and sell some goods under the well-known brand name owned by Cardinal company so Cardinal company uh, we are paying them one million dollars as a license fee if Archway company is acquired this arrangement would be discontinued so if I am the company who is going to acquire, I'm the landing company. If I acquire Archway Company, this arrangement will be discontinued. So one million dollars of the license cost will be saved. So if we are saving this, the cost of sales will re would reduce by one million. Landing company estimates that this would not affect Archway Company's volume of sales, but without the use of the brand name packaging, overall sales revenue would be five percent lower than currently. So revenue is actually going to be decreased by 5%. So I'm going to write two impacts over here. First, I'm deducting $1,000, which is the license fee. And secondly, I'm going to say that the revenue is going to decrease by 5%. So it is going to be now 95%. The license will be reduced, so 1,000 will be removed, and the revenue will become 95% because 5% of the price has been reduced. So overall sales revenue would be 5% lower than currently. Okay, any confusion with this? So we have taken 95%. Thank you everyone for telling the new revenue. So, uh, but obviously there may be some other adjustments as well. So let's right now uh, uh, make sure that it is open so that we can adjust this later on as well. Okay. Yes, I'm going to discuss this. Neeraj. Okay now, can you people read the adjustment number two and see what impact should be incorporated in adjustment number two?
try out the adjustment number two. Okay, in adjustment number two, the question says that Archway Company buys 50%. Archway Company buys 50% of its purchases from resale from Cardinal Company, one of the landing company's rivals, and receives a bulk buying discount of 10% of the normal prices. So Archway's company is purchasing 50%. Uh, of its purchases from uh, uh, for resale from Cardinal, uh, which is one of the landing company's rivals, and receives a bulk discount of 10% of the normal price. This, this, this discount does not apply to annual license fee referred in note number one above. So this is not going to be uh, applied on, on, on the previous values. This discount would not be available if Archway Company is acquired by the landing company. So we, we are receiving a 10% discount, which is not going to be received later. Now, how is this going to impact? How is this going to impact? This 10% discount, if removed, would increase the cost of sales. If, if this discount is not applied, this would increase the cost of sales. So yes, this will increase the cost of sales, but only 50% of the cost of sales will be increased, not the entire 100%. Because we are only purchasing 50% of the stock from, from this company. So if I go and if I apply it over there, I would say that 50% of this will increase by 10%. So I'm going to add 72,000 into 50%. What is 72,000? 73 minus 1,000 is 72,000. This is the cost of sales. And 50% of this is the value where we are receiving the discount. So 10% of that will automatically be added. So 72,000 into 50% is the goods that we are being that we are purchasing from, from the cartel company. And 10% prices would increase because we are not going to receive that discount. So this is the impact of the adjustment number two to be incorporated. Harsh is saying, why not 73,000? Because Harsh, 73,000 is not the cost. That includes 1,000 of, uh, of the annual license. So the purchase price is actually 72. That's why we are taking 72, 50% uh, 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 of 72,000. OK, now people are giving the right answers. Hamza Ali, your question is the same, that um that the uh that we are not using 73 because the license cost is included in that so first we are removing the license cost and then we are taking the discount 
okay you have got it that's good so now this this has become the the uh, cost of sales to us but right now i'm not calculating the total because there may be some other adjustments as well so let's let's first study the adjustment number 3 that this is pretty simple you you uh, uh, you people can manage this on your own quickly solve this Yes, Yumna, you can do do it that way as well. Okay, yes, there's one more thing that that we need to discuss in adjustment number two. There's one error that we have done. That actually, if we are getting a ten percent discount. If we are getting a 10% discount, this means that the price is actually 90%. So instead of taking 10%, what we can do is that, for example, 72,000 into 50%. These are the goods that we are purchasing from. These are the goods that we are purchasing from Cardle on 10% discount. So this price is actually 90% because of the discount. This price is 90% because of the discount. So the price removing the discount would become 4000 and this would result in the discount amount of $4,000. So if we calculate it like this, the answer would be incorrect as this would become 3600. So it's better to add 4000 directly instead of taking 10% of that. So, so I'm repeating this that we are receiving a discount of 10%. So the price that we are paying is actually 90%. So 50% of the total purchases is 36,000, which is 90%. So if we divide this by 90%, so we are going to get the value that is there, removing the discount. So the discount is actually of 4,000. So I've corrected this fully. Uh, are you getting this right now? And thank you, Yumna. Okay, so we are actually adding the discount of $4,000 in this case instead of that formula that we had applied previously. If there's any confusion in adjustment number two, you people can ask again. Simran, because the discount that we are getting is of 4000 As 50% of 72000 previously we had written 72000 into 50% into 10%, which was actually incorrect because this would give you 3600 3600 is not the right answer why because if we are getting a 10% discount this means that we are paying 90% of the actual cost we are paying 90% of the actual cost so if we are paying 90% of the actual cost so the $36,000 cost is 90% then what is 100% the 100% is 40,000 so instead of 40,000, we are paying 36,000. This means that we are getting a discount of 4,000. This is how we have calculated this. Are you getting the point, Simran, now? The price before discount was 40, and the price after discount is 36. So if you people want, you can take a snapshot, because I will be deleting this these handwritten values. Yes, Simran, this was a bit tricky. So I'm writing that this 4,000 has been shown in working number one, and I'm showing a working one over here. That what, what we have done, that discount is equals to 72,000. But I would say that the price before discount is equals to 72,000 into 50% divided by 90%, which is actually 40,000. And price after the discount is 72,000 into 50%, which is 36,000. So the discount is equals to 40,000 
minus 36,000 which is going to be 4,000. So this is how we have got the discount. So I'm removing these handwritten values. So is it clear to all of you how we have calculated the discount? Yes, Neeraj, exactly. Yes, Simran, Simran, you are right for the next adjustment. Okay, now we have added the discount of 4,000 and now let's move back towards the adjustment number three where the question says that the four person loan notes have been classified as a current liability due to their imminent redemption immediate redemption, imminent means immediate redemption, near redemption, as such they should not be treated as a long term funding, however they will be replaced immediately after redemption uh, by 8% loan notes with the same nominal value repayable in 10 years time. So the interest rate would actually increase from 4 to 8, this would increase from 4 to 8 so the, so the interest cost will be doubled. So I would say that the finance cost will increase by 400 and this would become the interest cost of 800. So the finance cost will actually be doubled from 4% to 8%. Then the question further says that landing company has obtained some of Archway company's retail sector average ratios for the year ended 30th September 20x6. It has then calculated the equivalent ratios for Archway as shown below. So these are the sector averages and these are the values of the Archway company. But obviously before the adjustments that we have just made, so we are going to solve, we are going to recalculate these ratios after the adjustments in part B. The question further says that a note, uh, uh, the note accompanying the sector average ratios explains that it is the practice of the sector to carry retail property at market values. So the practice of the uh, sector is to revalue the assets. The market value of Archway company's retail property is 3 million more than its carrying amount. So this means that the asset should be revalued by 3 million dollars in the books of Archway. The market value of Archway company's retail property is 3 million more than its carrying amount. This means that we have to revalue the property by 3 million dollars. Okay, Mohammed Nabil and Hamzali, I'm going to repeat that. So yes, Simran, the entry is actually investment debit, uh, sorry, property plant equipment debit, revaluation reserve credit. Ignore the effect of any consequent additional depreciation and gives 20, 12,000 square meters of the floor space. So this will, will, will actually, $3 million will affect the, re, the equity that we are going to calculate in adjustment number four. So retail earnings would be 300 and revaluation reserve would be 3000 because we are revaluing the asset upwards by 3000. Similarly, the question is said to ignore the excess depreciation and if I add the ordinary share capital in this I'm simply going to get the total equity. So the share capital can be seen from the balance sheet so if I go towards the balance sheet I can see the share capital is 10,000. So if the share capital is 10,000, the retail earnings are 2,300 and the revaluation reserve are 3,000. So the total of equity is actually 15,300. 10,000 of the share capital from the balance sheet and 2,300 retail earnings given by the question and 3,000 revaluation reserve identified from the last adjustment. So if there is any, there is any confusion with adjustment 4 you can discuss. Similarly we have added 10,000 because the question is asking about the total equity and the total equity would include all equity reserves, share capital, share premium, revaluation reserve, retail earning, any other reserve, all of the reserves are a part of equity. Simran, what didn't you get? 10,000 from where? From the balance sheet, Simran. 10,000 we have got from the balance sheet. If I go back to the balance sheet, you can see the share capital equity shares is of 10,000. This is from where I've got it. 
and then I've added the read and earnings of 2300 and then revaluation reserve. Okay, now a few people are asking about adjustment number three and let me read out those questions. Simeon is saying, sir, are reclassifying the 4% loan note from current to, yes, Sim Simeon, we are reclassifying the loan from current to non-current. And Simran is saying, why only add 400, not the whole 800? Okay, Hamzali is saying, please repeat the finance cost. And Muhammad Nabil is saying the same. So let me repeat. Actually, the, the, the adjustment number three said that the 4% loan notes have been classified as current liability due to their imminent redemption. So 4% loan notes. By what amount? If I go to the trial balance, uh, or the balance sheet, I will find that the 4% loan notes are of the par value of 10,000. So the value is 10,000 in the current liabilities. Moving back. So the question said that as such, they should not be treated as long-term funding because we are going to repay them. The question has treated this $10,000 uh, loan notes as a current liability. However, they will be they will be replaced immediately after the redemption by 8% loan notes so instead of 4% loan notes we are going to get 8% loan notes so this means that the finance cost will be actually be doubled so whatever is the previous finance cost into 2 is the new finance cost with the same nominal value so the nominal value is going to be the same 10000 and this loan is for the 10 year period so this would become the non current liability so 4% loan notes of 10000 from current are going to be removed and 8% loan notes of 10000 in the non current liability are going to be written yes simran we haven't paid 400 right now for example if i go to the answer i would say the finance cost was actually 4% of of the uh, 10,000 I'm writing a working for you people to understand old interest is equals to 4% of 10,000 which is 400 and the new interest is going to be 8% of the 10,000 So this means the incremental interest that I have to pay in the next year is going to be 800 minus 400. So this is the 400 that I've added over here. So I'm giving a reference of working number two with this. Is it clear now to all of you? Simran, because we are going to repay the loan in the next month. We are going to repay the loan in the next month. So, so I being the acquirer should treat the loan as a non-current because for me that would become non-current because I have to issue another loan note for that. For, for me as an acquirer, I, I'm not going to take the values shown in the, uh, uh, in the balance sheet. Instead, I'm going to take the values as they're going to affect me. So for me, that is a non-current liability. <clears throat> Harsh is saying so then don't we charge interest of the new loan only 11 months not 12 Harsh actually we, we are not only looking at, uh, at the next year only we are talking about a long term view that once I, I, I acquire this company what will be the annual revenue I'm talking about the annual revenue for multiple years not just the next year so that is why we are incorporating the entire 12 months Emma, the incremental revenue is that instead of 4% loan notes, we are going to issue new loan notes of 8%. So we have to pay uh, further interest of 400. Okay, now now we have all we have covered all of the adjustments. So let's close the workings. So the distribution cost is going to remain the same as 4,000 and 
the administrative expenses also don't have any adjustments so this is going to remain at 6000 the revenue is going to be 94000 into 94000 into 95% which is going to be 89300 and the cost of sale is going to be 73,000 minus 1,000 plus 4,000 which is going to be 76,000 and a negative 76,000 so the gross profit is going to be 89,300 minus 76,000 which is going to be 13,000 300 and then the distribution cost is a negative administrative expenses is a negative and now the profit is going to be 13300 minus 4000 minus 6000 minus 800 which is going to be 2500 and 20% of this is going to be 500 tax and the final profit is going to be 2000 <clears throat> so the question's requirement was to calculate the new revenue which is 89,300, the new cost of sales which is 76,000, the finance cost which is 800, the equity that we have already calculated as 15,300 and the non-current liability is going to be 10,000. How 10,000? That we are actually transferring the 4% loan notes from current liability to non-current. So this 10,000 will be shown as a non-current liability in the balance sheet. Similar saying, I still don't understand why we take incremental because we haven't paid the current liability. Similar actually do understand it like, like this, that you have a company, you have a company, where you have a current liability which is going to be repaid in the next month and I'm going to purchase that for you the interest is 4% but when I am going to purchase that the interest is going to be 8% so which interest is relevant for me the, the interest that you are currently paying or the interest that I would be required to pay after purchasing which interest is relevant the interest that you are currently paying or the interest that I would be required to pay after acquisition what do you think? Which interest is relevant? New interest is relevant. That is why we are incorporating the new interest. Because the old interest is not relevant to me. It is relevant to you, but it is not relevant to me because after I have purchased the company, I have to, uh, to pay the interest of 8%. So that is relevant to me. Okay, when Lee has a question, the year end is 30th September and the 4% loan notes expire on, on November means the interest expense. Okay, Wendy, actually you are only calculating the interest of the next year. Don't calculate the interest of exactly the next year. Calculate the interest that is comparable. The question is not asked you to, to, to recalculate for the next year. The question is asked you to calculate the appropriate which are which are relevant for the comparability purposes. So we are not actually charging 11 months interest because we are we want an interest that will be there on on each year moving forward. So even if you want uh, to adjust the interest for 11 months, go for that. It it won't matter a lot, but it will make you lose the mark of that interest finance cost. Okay, so Cooley is saying we we ignore depreciation after the purchase. Which depreciation, Cooley? Are you talking about? Are you talking about the incremental? Neeraj is saying we reduce the sales to ninety five percent. What about reduction of five percent to be incorporated in the cost of sales? Neeraj, actually, if you if you look at the question, the question had mentioned that. The, that this would not affect Archway's volume of sales. Volume of sales is not affected. The 5% lower is actually affecting the selling price. 
So the selling price has actually decreased by 5%. That is why we have not taken an impact on the cost of sales of that. Yes, Harsh, you are right. You, you, you have got the point correctly. Yes, depreciation on the revolution has been ignored because the question has mentioned this, that ignore the depreciation impact. Okay, good, Wenli, you have also understood it. So the question had mentioned that ignore the effect of any consequent additional depreciation. So we are actually following the question and not what should be done according to us. So we have to follow the 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 assumptions mentioned in the question. So now we have done with we are done with part A. Let's solve part B. In part B, the question says to recalculate the comparable sector average ratios for Ashway company based on your restated figures in A. So we have to recalculate these ratios 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 ratios. So let me write this over here. I'm going to calculate part B now, where we are going to start with the ratios as annual sales per square meter. And then we have sector average, we have archway, so I'm writing three values. The sector average, the archway written, and the one we had that we have calculated. And then the question has given us the ROCE and the net asset turnover, ROCE and the net asset turnover. And then we have gross profit margin, operating profit margin. And then we have Gary. So these are the ratios required now. And to calculate the first ratio annual sales per square meter, the question has given us the square meter are 1200. So I'm going to use this 1200. So in the answer, I'm going to say the revenue, which is 89,300 divided by 1,200. This is going to be the value of the square meter. We have used it in this ratio. Hamza, actually the question has mentioned that use 2,300. That's why we are using 2,300. Otherwise, we would have used the value that you have calculated. So 89,300 divided by 1,200 is 74. 74. Okay, it's not 1,200. I think it's 12,000. Okay, yes, it's 12,000. The square meter are 12,000. So I'm going to use 12,000 over here. So it is going to be 89,300,000 divided by 12,000. So this is going to be 7,442. So 7,442 square meter revenue is there for us. <clears throat> Similarly, the question has, uh, has asked us ROCE, so profit before interest and in tax divided by capital employed. So profit before interest and tax can be calculated as 2500 plus 800. 2500 plus 800 will give us the, pre, uh, the operating profit divided by capital employed, which is equity plus debt. So equity is 15,300 plus debt is 10,000. So this is the ROC that we are going to get in 200. So this is going to be 2500 plus 800, 3300 divided by bracket 15300 plus 10,000 and multiplied by the 100 is going to give us 13.04. So we can say that ROC is actually 13%. Harsh, we are, we are saying 7442 because all of these values are actually in thousands. 
all of these values are in thousands. So that is why we are saying 7442. So the net asset turnover is going to be 89300 divided by 15300 plus 10,000. So revenue divided by capital employed is the turnover. So 89,300 divided by 15,300 plus 10,000 is going to give us 3.53. So we will say 3.53 times is the net asset turnover. Smitha, we are calculating the operating profit. So PBIT, we are, we are going to get the PBIT. So PBT is 2500. If we add back the interest, we'll get the PBIT. 2500 plus 800 is going to be the PBIT. So we have to add back the interest to get the profit before interest and tax. Okay, now gross profit margin is going to be 13300 divided by 89300 into 100 and the operating profit margin is going to be again 2500 plus 800 to get the PBIT divided by 89300 into 100 we're going to get the operating profit margin so 13300 divided by 89300 into 100 is 14.89 so we can say 14.9 percent or we can even round it off as well an operating profit margin is 2500 plus 800 divided by 89 300 into 100 which is going to be 3.7 percent okay thank you everyone and now finally the gearing Let's see about gearing. The question is use debt divided by equity. So we are also going to use debt divided by equity. So the debt is $10,000 non-current liability and the equity we have calculated is 15,300 into 100. So 10,000 divided by 15,300 into 100 is going to be 65.34%. So this is the gearing of the company. <clears throat> Thank you, Guli. No, Smitha, there is no uh, specific rule of rounding off. You can round it off to two decimal place. You can round it off to one decimal place. You can round it off to any any specific decimal places. Okay, so so now we have got the re re uh, uh, the adjusted values. Now I'm writing down the the sector averages, which is eight thousand. and 18% and then 2.7 times 22% and then we have 11.7% in nil so these are the sector averages and now I'm going to write the normal values calculated by the question which was 7833 and then we have 58.5 times, 58.5 percent, sorry. Then 5 times 22.3. Okay, and then we have 11.7 and nil. Okay, this 11.7 is incorrect. It is over here. And the sector average is 6.7 percent and the gearing of the sector average is actually 30 and nil is over here okay so now we are done with copy pasting the values when Lee is saying I cannot find the equity of 15300 when the equity of 300 we have calculated over here 15300 This is the value. Okay, 
so now I have written the correct values. Is is there is any uh, is there is any uh, is there any confusion with this table? If there is any confusion, you people can ask quickly. Okay, Simran, I will give you the full view at the end so that you people can take the snapshot. Now we are going to write the part C, which is the analysis. We are where we are going to start from profitability ratios and then we'll be moving towards the liquidity uh, or the gearing ratios and then finally concluding. Okay now, so now we are going to compare the ratios as what was shown in the uh, uh, in the values and what should be shown. Only we have added 3000 because of the revaluation, revaluation 3000 given in the adjustment number 4. Yes, Simran, it is it is preferable to to put the headings. Okay, now I'm going to start with the with an answer that if we see the normal values given in the question, these are all better. 18 as compared to 58.5 net asset turnover better, GP margin better, OP margin better, gearing better. But in reality, what has happened? The ROC is is comparatively lower. Net asset turnover is better, GP margin is lower, operating profit margin is lower, and the gearing is, is even bad as compared to the industry. So all of the ratios which are given um, as positive are actually negative. Yes, Simran, if you want, you can put a heading. But I don't know how to insert on the above. Okay, so this is adjusted, this is industry, and this is the value as for the question. Is that okay, Simran? Okay, now let's discuss the profitability and the liquidity ratios. So I'm starting from profitability. If we see, I would say that a comparison of Archway companies records based on the reported results shows a far more better performance than the sector average. Over here we are talking about the values given in the question. These are far more better than the industry averages. But in reality, or I would say other than the annual sales per square meter. All of the values are better other than the annual sales per square meter. And I can even describe this further that the ROCE is almost thrice of the industry. Net asset turnover is almost twice as of the industry and the GP margin gross profit margin almost the same as the industry operating profit margin again almost twice the industry and the gearing being zero. So this is my first bullet where I've mentioned that the comparison between those of the industry and given in the question are far more better. Simran, you can take the snapshot, that would be easy and then write it down whenever you want to write. Nazia, I have said I've said that the values given in the question, the values given in the question these are far more better as compared to the industry. These are better as compared to the industry. So the ROCE is actually, 
if you see it is actually thrice the ROC of the company is, is actually almost thrice similarly the net asset turnover is almost double the GP margin is almost the same and the OP margin again is almost the double and the gearing is zero so I've mentioned all these facts in the answer that these are the realities that have been uh, uh, that have been given in the question but the problem is that do these values show the true and fair view do these values according to the question show a true and fair view the answer is no because there are there are a lot of adjustments required in these so uh, uh, as an acquirer for me the, re the these values are not relevant for me the values relevant are actually calculated by us so now we are going to write that after the adjustments after the adjustments to these values the results show uh, I would say the results show an opposite picture where the ROCE has reduced to 13% and the gross profit margin has also reduced below the industry average and the operating profit margin has almost been half of the industry and the gearing being twice the industry so first we have mentioned what picture has the question shown and what is the reality so that we can say that this is not the picture that uh, landing company should see instead this is the picture that which we should see and take the decision on uh, yes Junaid, uh, Emma Junaid, uh, you can do that but right now what is important to show to the landing company shareholders is that you are looking at the wrong values we want to say them that you are looking at the wrong values this is not the reality and this is the reality so so the objective is not to say that ROC uh, 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 what is the reason behind a lower ROC instead we want them to see the right ratios and then to analyze and then to analyze so we are we are going to talk about why these values are lower but the the more important thing is uh, making them show what to see and what not to see now we can say that the decline in the performance is wh why is the performance decline what do you people think why has the performance declined because of the decrease in the selling price by 5% we have decreased the selling price by the 5% and and the removal of the discount obtained on 50% of the purchases so we have actually removed the discount on 50% of the purchases and secondly we have removed the uh, so we have removed the discount and we have reduced the prices by 5% so these are the, the, the major factors that have resulted in the decrease in the performance and further there's an increase in the finance cost so actually from 4% to 8% so, so these are the three factors that are actually affecting the performance of the company that we are going to acquire or we are thinking of, of being acquired so, so three major reasons decrease in the ses, uh, uh, selling price by 5% secondly removal of the discount on 50% of the purchases and third the increase in the finance cost 
Further, the reclassification of loan from current to non-current has also increased the capital employed, resulting in a decrease in both ROCE and the net asset turnover. So both have actually decreased, the net asset turnover has actually decreased and similarly the ROC has also decreased. Imagine the, the uh, net asset turnover actually indicates that uh, how much uh, how much dollar of revenue do we generate from one dollar use of the assets. So for example if I'm using less assets and generating more sales this would show that my net asset turnover is good. So these are the four points that that that, uh, uh, that the students were expected to write in the exam. Now we, we will be continuing towards the gearing ratios because the total marks are nine. So nine points uh, or I would say five points would be more than enough. We have written already four in the profitability ratios and now we are going to discuss the gearing ratio. The gearing was previously nil and now this has increased to 65.4%. So the gearing has actually increased. So why has the gearing increased? So we are going to say that the gearing was previously shown as 0% because the loan was being classified as a current liability. But in actual as the loan has to be taken again it should be classified as a non-current liability and therefore has increased the gearing to 65.4% which is quite higher as compared to the industry and also shows a higher risk of the investor. So as an investor we would face a higher risk in this case. So we have discussed five points. Now we are going to give a conclusion. If you people have any question you can ask. If you people have any question you people can ask. Okay now let's understand the conclusion. I would say that based on the reported performance it seems to be a good decision to acquire uh, what was the name of the company? Archway company. But after the adjustments required, the performance of Archway company has reduced drastically, making it making its performance a lot lower than the sector. So we are saying that looking at the performance shown it seems to be good but according uh, to the adjustments it is not uh, uh, it does not seem to be good enough. Yes uh, Harsh you can put point number five instead of one.
So they're saying that, sir, what do you mean by uh, the, the loan will be taken again and should be classified as non-current? Actually, Smitha, we are going to repay the loan in, uh, uh, in the next month. But what after that? Are we going to retake the loan? Yes. So giving the loan and retaking the loan means that the, uh, it is uh, in such a way that we haven't repaid the loan in actual. So it is not a current liability. Uh, it, uh, it is a non-current liability because we are going to get the loan back. So that's why we are treating it as a non-current liability. Yes, you can do that, Harsh. Part taken again means that we are going to repay the loan and then we are going to take the loan back. So in actual, we, have, we haven't repaid. Uh, if you look at the substance of the transaction, legally we are repaying and taking it back, but the substance form says that you haven't actually repaid the loan. So that is not a current liability, that is a non-current liability. Simon is saying, sir, sorry to say that please did you take either of F6 or F9 lectures and when will March 2008 lectures commence? Simon, actually I do teach paper F9 as well. So for that you have to talk to me personally. Simran is saying, what is the substance form? Simran, um, substance form is something that you would have studied in F3. So um, I think that it is not necessary right of, of, of discussing it right now. So let's leave that right now. So in actual, I would say that we are actually repaying the loan and then taking it back in simple English. So it means that in actual, I haven't repaid any loan because I have to, uh, uh, because I have already taken it back. So let's write the write down the conclusion. I'm going to say that the purchase may still be favorable. for landing company but this depends on the price that is required to be paid so if i'm purchasing an uh, underperforming company obviously i would i would want to pay less so that is still uh, beneficial for me so i'm saying that the purchase may still be favorable depending on the purchase price that is going to be paid if the return on investment according to the price is above the current ROI of landing company, then the purchase would be feasible, otherwise not. So we have to say that if if the ROI, the, the, the return on the investment, the return that is being shown as compared to the price that landing company is going to pay, if that ROI is better than the current ROI, the, the purchase is still feasible. Otherwise, the purchase is not feasible. So this was your entire answer. And you people can take the snapshot now. This is the complete answer for, for landing company. Yes, Hamza, I will send you both the answers. Similar substance of the transaction is that we we haven't taken the we haven't taken the uh, we 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 haven't repaid the loan in actual, because if we are taking it back, it means that we haven't actually repaid the loan. Kuli is saying, sir, we we did calculate payback or IRR, so. How is the three convincing? Uh, Kuli, we, we haven't calculated the payback or the IRR in this question. We are, we are basically calculating the simple ratios. So uh, that is why uh, in the bullet three, we are saying that what depends is the, the other investment opportunities that landing company has. If they have a, a, a better investment opportunity, they can go for that and if not, they, they cannot go for that.
yes simran the roi is something uh, return as compared to the price that i'm paying so for example if i'm getting a return of 10 on a price of 10 i have a 100% payback and if i'm getting a return of 20 on a price of 1000 i would say that 10 was better as compared to 20 because the price was was cheaper so if i'm getting a return of 10 on an amount of 10 i say it is a 100% roi and if I, uh, 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 if i'm getting a return of 20 on a price of 1000 the ROA is too much low as compared to that of 10. So, so only the profits are not the decision making part that if I'm earning more over here, this, this is preferable. No, I'm earning as compared to what investment is important. That my investment as compared to my return is something that is more important as compared to the earnings in an isolation. Okay, so everyone, we are done with the, with the answers. If you people have any question now, you people can ask. I'm going to share some value, some um, some rules of that you are going to follow in the paper F7 on how. Sorry. So we are going to discuss how to solve paper F7. Now in the paper, you actually have three sections, section A, section B, and section C. On an average, if we see the total paper time is three hours, and you have 100 marks that you have to solve, that makes it 1.8 minute per mark in the exam. But for section C, I would say that is comparatively less time than what actually you, what actually you, uh, 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 you people would be requiring. So we have to adjust the time accordingly. Neeraj is saying the days are moving so fast. <laughs> yes, Neeraj. Simran is saying so it should be higher than the individual ROI of landing so it could increase the total ROI. Yes, exactly. Simran, you have got the right point this time. So if we see there are total three sections, section A, section B and section C, total three hours of 100 marks which makes 1.8 minute per mark. So I would say that for, for, for section A and section B questions, each question is of two marks. So that will make it 3.6 minutes per question per MCQ, which is comparatively too much higher as compared to what is required. So I would say that readjust this and give three minutes, give three minutes per MCQ to section A and B. So this would become three minutes per MCQ into 30 MCQs will become 90 minutes. So you have approximately 1.5 hours for section A and B and remaining 1.5 hours for section C. So this should be your plan of three minutes giving to each MCQ and 30 MCQs would require 90 minutes, which is 1.5 hours and remaining 1.5 hours to section C, which will make approximately 45 minutes per question that you have time. So you have to invest 45 minutes on ratios question and 45 minutes on the final accounts question or, or the consolidation question. So this should be your time allocation of three minutes per MCQ and 45 minutes per section C question. This should be your time allocation. And I would recommend to start the paper from your best part. If you think that you are the best in section C, start from section C. If you think you are the best in section A, start from section A. If you think you are the best in section B, uh, start from section B. Simran, uh, uh, Simeon, the, the 15 minutes extra time, keep it as a buffer. Keep it as a buffer so that anything that is uh, that exceeds the planning time, plan time would, would, cover, uh, would be covered over there. Smitha in section C, you, you people are going to find a final accounts question and an ratios question. If, if not, then a consolidation question and, uh, and a ratios question. So ratios question, uh, uh, the ratios question will be there with this either final accounts or the consolidation. 
but my, my but my idea is that uh, the, the more chances are of final accounts question yes uh, Simran, this will actually increase your your confidence that start from your best part and end at your worst part so for example you th you you think that you are worst in section a then solve the section a at the end so that you you have to score the passing marks from your best part you have to score the passing marks from your best part so for example you say my part b and part c are the best so so you have approximately 70% of the marks over there so try to score 50% from over there because if if you if you are solving your best part you should be able to score at least 50 out of 70 from over there okay i'm repeating the the combination as per my estimate the the section c is going to contain either a final accounts plus ratios or a consolidation plus ratios but my prediction is that the chances of this are comparatively higher than consolidation plus ratios but be prepared for both because sometimes the paper is not what is expected and you don't have time to see what to try your luck so don't don't go towards the luck cover both final accounts consolidation ratios but preferable chances are of final accounts in the ratios and section B will would comparatively contain uh, one case from a single standard or one case from two standards three questions from one standard and two questions from one standard so normally normally section B is an area which is good for people and section A is the area that is worst for the students because that contains a lot of different accounting standards so my my uh, uh, estimate is that students tend to start from section C and then B and then end at A because section A would would confuse you more some uh, question one coming from 12 then IFRS 15 then 36 then IFRS 5 then 20 then 23 21 consolidation framework ratios a lot of areas differently asked in, in section A but in section B there's a single approach in section C there's a single approach to be followed so comparatively section B and C are easier as compared to section A okay uh, Emma Janae is asking what standards do they do they usually ask in section B Emma uh, normally in section B uh, there will be some big standards such as IES 12 can be asked over there IFRS 9 can be asked over there IFRS 16 can be asked over there IFRS 15 can be asked over there in section B IES 16 can be asked in section B uh, similarly IES 36 and IFRS 5 can be asked as a combination so so these are the standards that are uh, comparatively of higher chances to be asked in section B with the small standards such as 21 the disposal and uh, the uh, the basic standards are probably to be asked in section A Simran is saying sir if we end at our worst part we would panic for 1.5 months until the result Simran you may panic until the result but after result you will not panic <laughs> the panic will stop because probably you would have passed by covering the majority of your best area IS 40 Smitha can be asked in section A IS 2 section A IS 41 section A yes so so if you people want me to, to tell you in detail I, what I can do is if I go back onto the first slide this is that that we have covered or even if I go further okay just give me a second I'm 
trying to find my day one presentation right now because that had contained the, the entire syllabus. Okay, so I think the day one is not over there. <clears throat> okay, so we can only discuss from over here. I don't have the day one presentations right now, otherwise I could have shown you. No, Simran, I don't teach P5, I do teach P2, not P5. Okay, so if I talk about this, I would say IES 16 can be asked in section B, or a complete section B can also be designed, but IES 40 and 23, if they are being asked individually, this, this will be asked in section A. So IES 16 for section B, 40, 23 for section A. And these three standards can be asked in section A and B both. But 38 cannot be asked in section B. This can be asked in section A. These two areas can be asked in section B. And this can be asked in section A. The final accounts will be there in section C. Consolidation can be asked in all sections, section A, B, and C. But more chances to be there in B and C ratios can be asked in section C. So these are these, the, the, the different areas that can be asked in different sections. And those areas that we haven't covered in, in, uh, in the revision course will be there in section A only. So if you strongly cover IES 12, 15, 16, 36, I5, 5, consolidation, ratios, final accounts, if you have strong grip on these eight areas, you have strong grip on 70% of the marks of the exam, which is section B and C. So do cover these, IFRS 9 also for section B. So, so try to cover section B and C first because that would make you pass easily. Yes, tomorrow's mock will be at 10 a.m. Pakistan Standard Time, PST. Uh, yes, starting from the same time as today, but will be ending one hour before today's time. Okay, one more request from all of you. Once we end the session, you you uh, you people get a feedback form. Once we end the session, you people get a feedback form. That feedback is very necessary. Do fill that form because that is the feedback which is being uh, which 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 actually ACCA uh, analyzes uh, on. So so try to fill that form. And thank you everyone for today's session. I hope the the entire five day session was, for, was useful for you people and it will be helping all of you to pass the exams. Thank you very much. Take care and Allah Hafiz.